In this video, we're going to talk about magnets, specifically neodymium magnets, which are uh, a very strong type of magnet and can be used very cleverly uh, in various types of designs. Uh, we're going to take a look at this website, KNJ Magnetics. This is a fantastic vendor for neodymium magnets. We have used them many times in the past. They have excellent prices and a wonderful selection of different types of neodymium magnets. Uh, so let's click in their, uh, their their product offering and see what we have. We can see uh, a variety of different shapes and sizes. Uh, some of them have hooks integrated. Some of them have a plastic rubber coating. I really like these countersunk magnets here because you can attach them to your whatever your part is using a flathead screw. Uh, I guess they have counter uh, counter board mag magnets as well. Uh, counter bore is just like a, a flat bottom um, depression in your part, whereas the counter sink is more of a conical depression. So a counter bore would allow you to use like a socket head cap screw, whereas a counter sink uh, would require you to use a flat head screw. So this one right here is the counter sink. And this one over here looks like a counter bore. I actually didn't realize they had counter board uh, magnets, but that's great. Um, uh, either way, you can use a fastener to connect the magnet to your part in a very secure, robust way that you can be confident will not come apart. Um, otherwise, you're, you're trying to rely on, I don't know, a press fit or, or maybe you're gr gluing it in place. And uh, these magnets are, are not high precision as far as geometry. Uh, I think their standard tolerances like on the diameter of the magnet is plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. That's what they state anyway. In actuality, it might be a uh, tighter tolerance than that, but uh, their, their spec states, I think it's plus or minus five thousandths. So you can't really rely on uh, the geometry to be tightly enough controlled for a reliable press fit. So that's why I really like these uh, these countersunk uh, magnets because you can you can hold them down with a screw. Um, so let's take a look at an example where we incorporated uh, some magnets. Okay, this is a plastic injection molded case for a mouthpiece and uh, what we did is incorporated some magnets into the case so that the user could easily um, uh, close the case and, and open the case and and uh, instead of using uh, some kind of um, snap feature, which also would have been fine, but uh, the customer was looking for something a little bit a little bit cleaner, a little bit uh, more interesting than just a snap. And so we put some magnets in here and it ended up working really well. Uh, you, in orange, I mean, the or, the magnets aren't actually orange in color, but just to kind of differentiate them for the rest of the parts, they're orange in this CAD model. So you can see four magnets here in the top case, top half of the case, and then in the bottom half, there are four magnets as well. If I zoom in, you can see there's the top face of one of the bottom four magnets. And uh, these worked excellently. Um, the, the top half of the case snaps on to the bottom half of the case. Um, these neodymium magnets are very strong, so they provide a, a nice secure uh, closure between the top and bottom halves. And, uh, and it just feels cool. You know, magnets are, are cool. They have this kind of wow factor about them. Um, and I think in this case, we may have ended up using some glue to, to hold them in place. Um, in fact, I think that's, yeah, you know, we have these little dimple features down at the bottom. And I think what we did was we filled it up with glue around that dimple feature and, uh, and used that to hold, uh, to hold the magnets in place. Um, so anyway, there's, there's a, a great example of how to use magnets in a part. Now this, these ones obviously are not the countersink style. Uh, they're just straight cylinders that we, we pushed in place and used a, a little bit of a heat si adhesive to hold them there. Um, but you could certainly use the adhesive style here. In fact, we may have opted for the adhesive or for the countersink style if, uh, I think maybe we just didn't realize those ones existed at the time. Uh, but we have used those countersunk, uh, magnet styles in, in many other design applications since and they work very well. 
Uh, it's just a secure, great way to hold a magnet. And uh, uh, customers always love these. They're again, they have this wow factor about them. And magnets are just just a, a cool uh, a cool piece of hardware to be able to integrate into your design. Let's take a look at some of the technical spec specifications of these magnets. Uh, KNJ Magnetics provides this great um, technical summary here. And it looks like the tolerances are plus or minus four thousandths of an inch, not five. Still too loose for what I'd want to rely on for a press fit, but um, four thousandths of an inch instead of five, a little bit better. Uh, so let's take a look at their, their um, pull force cases. So they have pull force case one for this particular magnet, 8.58 pounds. Pull force case two, 24.14 pounds. Now, you might be asking, what is case one? What is case two? How is that defined? Uh, they have those definitions here in the next tab. Pull force case one, distance, uh, a magnet to a steel plate. So if you have a magnet that's stuck to a steel plate, that's pull force one. Uh, if you have a magnet stuck between two steel plates, that's uh, pull force case two. And then they also have case three and four, which were not uh, shown in this first tab but uh, are included here and each one of these is hyperlinked so if you click on it it pulls up a really cool graph here it is and this graph shows you the relationship between force and distance um, uh, your your magnetic force drops off rapidly with distance so when your magnet is stuck to another magnet or uh, your ferrous material uh, for example a steel plate um, that is going to provide you with the highest amount of magnetic attraction or force. And that's represented here. Uh, it says zero. That, that's a zero inch distance. So uh, zero, zero displacement or zero distance or gap between the magnet and, and what it's attached to. And you see we get, you know, around eight pounds, eight and a half pounds up here. Well, you can hover over it and it'll show you exactly what it is. And then as our magnet separates, gets uh, further away from the part to which it's connected, the, uh, the amount of, of force drops off rapidly. You can see here when the magnet is separated by 50 thousandths of an inch, 0 0.05 inches, now we're down to only four pounds. So uh, 50 thousandths of an inch, which is a little bit thicker than the thickness of a credit card, uh, you've already lost more than half of your magnetic attraction. And, and that, uh, that condition just continues to, uh, worsen as your, your, um, your distance increases further. So this is something that's really important to remember because it's going to come into play when you incorporate magnets in your design. You know, let's say that you know that you need uh, at least, I don't know, seven pounds of force between whatever you're supposed to hold together. So if you know you need at least seven pounds, you can come in here and say, okay, well, uh, let's see it. 0.013 separation, I have 6.4 pounds of force, uh, 0.008 inches of separation there I have seven pounds of force so I need a minimum of uh, point uh, or a maximum of point zero zero eight thousandths of an inch separation between my magnet and my part of course if if you needed more than that and you weren't confident that you could uh, you could achieve only point zero zero eight maybe you thought that you're going to be you know down closer to, to five uh, or, uh, 50 thousandths of an inch, then you could always just incorporate a second magnet or a second, second set of magnets, and then you'd have two times this 3.99 pound force. Um, anyway, those, uh, just a, a quick overview to show you what the technical specifications look like and how you can use them to help, um, uh, determine what, what magnet and what, what case type um, you should uh, try to achieve in, in your design. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. 
Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.